What's up guys, back in today with another reaction to the Berserk manga. This time I'll be reacting to volume 20, uh, the chapters The Threatened and Omens. Um, about the midway point of this volume now, been some really awesome stuff in here. Uh, we'll just have to kind of revise myself up on uh, what happened last time. Um, I do remember pretty well <laughs> what happened at the end of the last chapter, being that the kind of circular form of the frog legs actually ends up being a behelot, but a human at the same time again i'm not really sure about the logistics um of that to be honest with you but um i especially need to kind of revise what happened in this hell's angels chapter to be honest with you um obviously luca got captured and that's how we kind of found out that that um thing was uh actually a kind of human behelot but i um, do just want to go over those chapters anyway um we had some really nice art as usual some really nice artwork of uh, these guys um, not too much in the terms of progress fighting them. Uh, we kind of took this guy's arm off, but that's pretty much all we've done to these guys, isn't it? Yeah, the, uh, this chapter is pretty much just full on kind of fighting guts versus Moskus. I uh, had this uh, really holy looking image here as well. Like I said, that actually really reminds me of something. I just uh, can't quite put my name on it. But um, yeah, we kind of ended off that fighting. Again, kind of picked back up with Skull Knight versus the. Uh, Versus the the human behelot. It's a bit of a nuisance really isn't it? The good thing about behelots was. I mean. Discounting that kind of lost chapter. Because again that just that kind of creates all kind of complications. Again I'm going to try and kind of discard that where I can. Uh, discarding that. Behelots were actually kind of. Quite um, easy to deal with if you know what I'm saying. They were just a small kind of round thing. If you found one like guts just keep it on you. I'm not sure if you could. I'm, we haven't seen anyone try to destroy them or anything. But um, just kind of. Just keep it on you and just pretty easily manageable this one not so much of course but i think this was a little tease at it wasn't it right here with these eyes they're very much like beheaded like eyes didn't they kind of piercing um and just weird looking yeah luca got captured we had this uh leather face <laughs> little tribute right here and uh, again we ended off with um a really cool story actually Really dark story, but really cool backstory for this guy. Kind of uh, in this dark cave, getting bodies dropped on him. As this, uh, I don't know why it looks so bright right now. Maybe because I've just recently woke up, but uh, I love these quotes here. Suddenly I pe perceived myself and everything surrounding. Everything possessed a word, a form, and a meaning. Also that the world I knew was filled with despair. And that I was nobody, buried and fading away in the deep. I cried out. I cried like a, both a baby's first and a dying man's last. In a voiceless voice. The angels answered me. In exchange for something, we will grant your wish. Yes, the something is the world that surrounds me, and the wish is to hatch the perfect world. Again, that was a really awesome enter. Last few chapters, wasn't it? Really awesome enter. Again, some beautiful artwork. Read up the kind of uh, depravedness of a lot of it. But yeah, this guy is going to hatch the perfect world, is he? Makes you question, is, is this behelot any better or worse or, or than a normal behelot? Again, it's... A lot of questions surrounding this guy. Still very much a mystery, even though we kind of revealed what he is, I guess. Not who he is, what he is. Um, quite fitting that he would uh, he would want to become this, considering his whole backstory, isn't it? He wants to... Almost like he wants to bring uh, happiness to everyone else <laughs> around him. It's, uh, probably put that very lightly, but... And perhaps the perfect world is... Um, Kind of admirable in a dark way, is what I'll say. But yeah, make sure you let me know what you guys thought about uh, these couple of chapters I'll be reading today in the comment section. Leave a like on the video if you guys liked, and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with these reactions. Let's, <laughs> let's get right into it. An egg? <laughs> of course, uh, Luke has no idea what this is. It would just very much be an egg. Oh, he's got this horrible, horrible kind of outward spine right here. Lovely. It does make you question his his kind of anatomy and his um oh yeah his anatomy is one question but his kind of insides what does his insides look like 
Probably a bit of a messed up question to ask, but I mean, he's an egg. <laughs> Conviction arc, birth ceremony chapter. The threatened. An egg? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am an egg. <laughs> You're not really, though. The egg of the perfect world. I guess it is quite fitting that it is like. It is an egg, really. It's like cracking open a new kind of life, rebirthing something. Like what we saw with Femto, kind of. He was. I, I kind of put it as like a, uh, a butterfly, a kind of. Um, a cocoon of sorts. But I guess it's like an egg as well. Something being born from that. But again, I kind of saw it more like, um, more like a cocoon, if anything. Kind of wrapping around the old form and evolving it. Rather than something completely new being born. But I guess something completely new is being born as well. So they both work pretty well actually. The egg of the perfect world. A lot of candles in here isn't there. Especially for a guy with no arms. Like logistics wise. How did he light these? <laughs> and uh, how did he put them here? He's an egg. Cool setting though isn't it? Really awesome sound. The perfect world? What? Well, what does that mean? Again, this guy's text is reasonably hard to read without zooming in. I'm not going to put that voice on this time. <laughs> uh, I think there's going to be quite a lot of dialogue for this guy, sir. I crawled out of my hole and closely observed the newly arrived humans. And the ones I glimpsed there would fall down dead, absurdly and indiscriminately. Then the suffering and fear of the living trying to escape, that's death. The deceit filled system established to conceal that chaos. This guy's got a very good understanding of what's going on here, doesn't he? Again, a really ominous looking short here. Again, it, it's, again, it's really creepy as much as it probably some people might find it quite funny. But I think it's actually quite creepy, the, the kind of roundness. Again, sometimes um, it's something to do with like faces. Uh, uh, everyone has slight kind of no one has like a perfectly kind of symmetrical face and stuff. And um, there was a there was something I read up, um, about someone when they show a picture of them with a kind of perfectly kind of symmetrical face. They're actually quite scared. It's quite scary. So I feel like that's probably the play a little bit of the case here. This guy's head's just so beautifully round and uh, symmetrical and stuff. It's quite creepy, as mo as much as some people might find it quite funny, and it is quite funny at times. The people caught between the order of the crooked system, death. Yeah, I feel like these uh, this refugee camp is a pretty good kind of symbol for limbo, almost, isn't it? The place between life and death. The bizarre festival. I was trying to look for that word there for ages the other day. Limbo. Um, the bizarre festivals where uh, where with their own hands they gave shape to the shapeless fear they wished to escape. And both hunters and the hunted, every one of the threatened, was enthralled by heat. Ironic, isn't it? Quite ironic. They do this to escape from the um, the threat, the darkness, but ultimately they're just adding fire to the flames. The world was ugly. My garden was buried by the debris of that ugly world. <clears throat> what the hell do you mean to do? This grudge? Are you going to take the revenge on the people of Albion? Okay. 
That spine is creepy, isn't it? One time, I caught sight of a certain girl. The girl lived by selling her body to men. He's been watching her quite, he's been involved with her quite a bit. I did mention this a few chapters back, but again, she looks so much like Griffith. Could she be the kind of Griffith stand in for this? I mentioned that a few times. She definitely has got the kind of psyche stuff going on again, not, not the same as, well, I guess, reasonably similar in a way to Griffith and what he was going through, especially when we saw the kind of him in that kind of lake casca and scratched his arm. Had quite the uh, quite the mental situation going on then, but and we have seen at every turn she has almost chose the kind of wrong, kind of worse option. So um, again, it's interesting. Is it interesting? I'm not sure who else it would be. Maybe Farnies. Um, again, this this art's been really good at kind of keeping that question quite open, hasn't it? Nina Farnies. Um, not sure who else it could be really. Those two are probably my main suspects thinking about it um anyone else i mean i would have said the uh nina's boyfriend but probably not <laughs> he's not not very important to the story is he well i say that he's quite important to the story but he's not he's not a kind of massive character in the story but he is quite important to it she was possessed by disease near to death and about to be crushed at any time by a world full of fear. But the girl had something to rely on. The leader of her group gathered girls together and lived heart heartily, heartily through the harsh days. It, Nina and me? The girl clung to her. She took refuge with her like a torch in the night. But the torch didn't just cover the girl in warmth. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Covered her in... <laughs> Covered her in liquids as well. As I'm sure what you're going to say here. Nah, obviously not, but... Lovely image we're about to see right here, isn't it? Apologies, guys. It threw light upon... An inflamed wound hidden by the dark. Enough of that. Look at those babies. Oh, babies being boiled. Nasty. I hope I read that right. <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't want to zoom in there. But those threatened by the dark can by no means ever let go of a torch. Well, you say that. It kind of seemed like she was going to let go of her torch during this scene. But she didn't. Ultimately, she didn't. And I think we could tell her main intention was to not let go, but the question did come into her mind, didn't it? It wasn't out of the question, but apparently to Mr. Behelet here, it, it was. Which is quite interesting. Again, that's not the way I originally saw that, but... Brings up a good point here. All they can do is stare in blank surprise at their illuminated, disgustingly cruel selves and continue to suffer it. Uh, really, uh, really talking about some deep stuff right here, isn't he, Mr. Behella? And some, some themes we've had throughout the whole story. And to protect their stunted self-esteem, they depend on it, and while having it, cravenly, deceitfully. I, too, while ad abhorring this world that only buried and crushed me, cannot escape from that light. When it comes to those humans, mad with fear, swarming like bugs beneath the tower, nothing will ever change. True. True. 
And this guy is talking quite a lot of truth. I, I missed this bit, he said no. Cannot escape from that light. No. When it comes to those humans, mad with fear, swarming like bugs beneath the tower, nothing will ever change. Yeah, and he's right. He is right. The ugly, the craven, the deceitful, the threatened. They who cling and they who hate. There is but one thing we truly desire. It's quite... See, if it, is it me? I don't know if it's just me or not. I looked then and it... It most of the time looks like those are just two eyeballs straight, but it almost looks like when I looked at it then it almost looks like those eyes should be reversed if that makes sense. Like that the eye on the right is actually the left eye and the left eye is the right eye, which would make sense with it, with the rest of the behellas design, of course. Sometimes it doesn't look like that. I don't know, that's just a me thing. It is the definitive missing piece between the old world and the new. And what is that exactly? Why has this guy got the brand on his tongue? Interesting. So he's saying people are missing him, <laughs> essentially. You're missing me. <laughs> the link between the old world and the new. The behelot. The thing that's going to send you there. Bit vain, Mr. Behelot. Bit vain. Again, why has he got a brand on his tongue? And aren't the brands sig signify the kind of the sacrifice of a human? Interesting. Namely, that the light that illuminates the darkness. Namely, so we, uh, so we move on. Namely, myself. <laughs> Yeah, we'll pick him back up on this one. I do wonder what he was going to say. Again, is it going to be namely himself? What I feel like should be said there, but... Yeah, so we'll pick him back up on, on this fight. Oh god, look at that face. Oh, bloody hell. We did a hell of a lot of damage to that wheel, actually, didn't we? Dude, look at this guy's muscle. Like tripled. <laughs> like triple right there. Bloody hell. Crying. Guts is uh, quite surprised as the little one comes in. Again, what a battle this is. Guts versus bloody, what, six people right now? Could use a bit of help, really. Not really Guts' style, is it? That would be interesting to see if we ever do get someone. Maybe not on par with Guts, but someone he can work with, if you know what I'm saying. Someone that can lend him a hand. A little sidekick of sorts, maybe a little Isidro. Maybe he might accompany Guts on the rest of his journey. That would be pretty cool to see. Train him a little bit. I'm not even sure what's going on here. <laughs> it's an absolute blur. I 
bloody hell. Why is this guy eating his own arm like that, by the way? What use does he have for his arm now? I love his weapon, though. Really love his weapon. Yeah, look at this. Look at what we've... Oh my god, they've morphed even more. He's got wings on his head now. But just look at this. This is only three of them. There's still a couple more behind these guys. But look at this situation. Really cool shot here, by the way. Really like this shot. And grabbed. <laughs> Bloody hell. It's amazing, isn't it? You see a lot of action heroes and such just kind of let their sword go at that moment and save save themselves getting hit by this but really makes a lot of sense Guts would never let his sword go in this situation but ever really as we've seen a lot with the sleepless nights without the sword the godos and uh, even earlier than that obviously what we saw from his uh, childhood as well um <clears throat> Just a nice character moment here, isn't it? Small detail. This gets absolutely flung. Looks like he almost grates his own neck with a sword. Bloody hell. Oh, that was nasty, by the way. And, uh, Bit of a spoiler here, skip uh, skip that 20 seconds if you don't want to get spoiled for Evil Dead Rise, but it's a nasty scene with a um, cheese grater in there, which was, yeah, just absolutely nasty. Absolutely nasty, really made me cringe. There's a lot of that in Evil Dead though, isn't there? There's a lot of really horrible, horrible moments like that. Especially in, again, this recent one and the remake from 2013 or 14. Not really a remake, but it's quite funny because the second one is the first one's the original there's the second one is pretty much a remake of the first one literally and then almost again in the second half but different and then there's another remake which isn't really a remake but is a remake from 2013 or around that time quite funny Yeah, off topic again. Some of you guys will be happy to hear I've uh, I've been watching a lot of um, Cronenberg's work recently. Really, really enjoying it. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of classics I didn't actually realize were done by him. I just last night I finished watching Eastern Promises and that was really good. Probably my favorite, along with The Fly so far. Probably my favorite. Really enjoyed that. But yeah, obviously, uh, quite the more tame <laughs> kind of concept. It, well, I say tame, it was quite a brutal concept, but I mean, in terms of... Well, it was disturbing, but in a different way than usual. In a very different way than usual. I really like this guy as well. I liked a lot of these guys, to be honest with you. It's such a shame. There it is. There's the snipe shot right there. As you get him in the eye. Oh. Two birds with one stone. Oh. Sorry, guys. Bloody hell. Wow, this guy's bloody chin. That is a badass shot. He's fighting with those freaks. I'm winning. 
<laughs> is he human? Duh. Again. Just absolute knockoff right there, isn't it? Of course he's winning. Because he's the man! <laughs> if you train hard under me, someday you too can be a master of elf dimension style. <laughs> oh man, I love these guys. I love these guys. He's the man. He sure is. He sure is the CGI. I'm not sure I'd say winning. I mean, he's, he's doing well. He's, he is kind of winning against these guys. But like I said, there's still a couple more. And there's Moscus as well. A bit too, a bit too soon to say. A bit too. Uh, that was lazy, wasn't it? Too, too soon <laughs> to say winning. Um, really interesting shot of the blade right here, isn't it? Really interesting shot. Kind of almost like an illusion. I think it is facing us. I think that's just because it, it it looks so wide it almost looks like it should just be going upwards but I think it's actually just facing us and it's just again it's just such a behemoth of a blade that it's just it looks like it should be going upwards but it's actually just that thick <laughs> really nice shot of the blade right there He's the man. What? What is this? There's Mozzie. Mozzie Mozgus. Just looking on. I'm scared. So scared. Luca. And into the next chapter. What is this? Father Moscus? What is that for? That man? When the black swordsman appears, he breaks. The world I recognize comes crashing down in ruins. True, true. That does happen a lot with Farnese, doesn't it? Every time Guts is with her, around her. Gets enveloped in this fantasy world almost. Yeah, they're slightly developing, aren't they? These guys. Like a more demonic by the minute. Even the wings and the way they're actually using them now. A lot less heavenly. Conviction Arc, Birth Ceremony, Chapter, Omens. He's dreadful. Really? Again, I can kind of imagine how it would look kind of dreadful. I mean, it has been dreadful for her, but this kind of, especially on looking, if you looked at this from far away, you'd think Guts would be, is actually taking down angels. I mean, these guys are, we know that these guys are kind of angels in their own way, aren't they? Um, but you'd, uh, you'd, uh, yeah, you'd think that Guts, as, as in most cases, you'd think he's like the bad guy in the situation, wouldn't you, if you look, the, look from afar? The black swordsman versus these angelic forms. He's doing a nice job here. I mean, this guy wasn't really using his wings, to be fair, but cut, cut one of them off. Maybe he was using them, but just for kind of propulsion, perhaps. A far niece has come across Nina. Again, my two favourites for <laughs> who might be the Griffith of this situation, which is interesting. Yes. It's her imaginary cloak. Sorry. Am I reading that? I missed a bit. A child threatened by the dark night. 
as her imaginary cloak of faith burned away and is illuminated. Wow, you being exposed now, are you? Is that what you think is going on here? Wow, that's a really awesome image, isn't it, to actually display that. Really cool. I like this show a lot. Look at those little toys as well. <laughs> Cute little toys. Yeah, that's a really awesome shot here, isn't it? imaginary cloak of faith burned away and is illuminated exposed get hold of yourself <laughs> This video is going crazy over here. Maybe, maybe you start helping out and help us for energy, Isidro. I guess not like you can do that much. Don't get me wrong, but like these guys could try and do something. Let me go. Let me go. It looks like he wants to do something. <laughs> I did, I missed that bit on the top left. Yeah, I might I might endure a painful death. If he does get involved. To be fair, so. You want to die that badly? You're the one who's going to die. <laughs> what happened to him? Was that, was that the puck that done that? What happened to this guy? <laughs> That's a hilarious fucking face right there, isn't it? But what happened? Zong, something hit him. Was it a Cedro? Or was it Puck controlling a Cedro? <laughs> I feel like it was probably Puck maybe controlling a Cedro right here. I just thought that was kind of a gag, but I guess it, you can actually do it. That fucking face right there, man. <laughs> Jesus. One of, more, one of the more absurd reactions we've got in this series. But I say that. May, maybe not even top 10, to be fair. We've had a lot of crazies. But, bastard. What, what? What just happened? What went zoom? His manhood's all in pieces. Ah, oh, I see. So... <laughs> The Cedro got him in the balls. Look at this cheeky ass shot of the Cedro right here. I, I love this guy a lot. Again, I'd love to see this guy as uh, kind of like almost an apprentice of guts. Then again, I also wouldn't because, like I said plenty of times, it's best for characters not to be in the story because then they might actually survive and have good things happen to them perhaps. But that would also mean that we don't see them again. Oh yeah, I really love Cedro. He's so cool, isn't he? Okay. <laughs> Look at that fucking face from Moscus right there. Looks even scarier now, doesn't he? And just luckily enough, that perfect part of his hat, obviously it's drawn in a way that that's the case, but perfectly displays that face. Oh god. Um <laughs> Please wait, master. This is a task for us. Please leave this to me and the others. You must somehow accomplish your own holy task, Father Moscus. We quite liked this guy as well, didn't we? Again, it's a like I said, I we liked all these guys to be honest with you, it's a bit of a shame. Again, it's like like them as much as we could, being kind of torturists. That's a word, but um, yeah, 
kind of torture artists. They, they were again, they were quite um, felt bad for them, didn't we? Oh yeah, just a, just a shame. Just a shame that to end up like this. It would seem I lost my composure a bit. I have left the twins as your bodyguards, master. And let us go. Cass! You should stop. This is no joke. So be it. It's come to this. <laughs> Let's go, Park. Let's go. No, you don't. A big old rock from a uh, little cry of the Cedro here. A Cedro punch. Elf strike angel go stabity. <laughs> oh, we go for Mosgus. Oh my god. Let's go. Let's not die here. <laughs> Let's please not die here though. Jesus. Elf strike angel go stabity. And the Isidro punch. And it's like Moskus' head was so strong it broke the rock. What a technique here by Puck, by the way. That's a deadly combo right there. <laughs> Landing as well. Halt. Constantly chestnut this time. Huh? Yeah. Unmoved. Unfazed, of course. Even as a man, I think he would have been reasonably unfazed the amount of beating he's taken, fucking dropping down, doing the planks on the floor when he was praying. And they just go. That's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, I say that. Oh, they're still on him. Oh, God. Is he literally just like, has he not even noticed them? <laughs> has he just flown off not even noticing them? I love this reaction, by the way. Again, so berserk. It's really amazing, isn't it? I feel like just because there's so much detail, so much effort put into it, I feel like when the, he does do this, especially with Puck, that we see a lot of with the simple design. But here here as well, another great example with a Cedro. Sometimes because of that amount of detail, the simpler stuff really does kind of shine bright, doesn't it? The the really simple kind of funny moments, sometimes they shine even brighter because of that kind of detail. And I think there's this shot here, especially again, because uh, look at Mosgus' design and look at Cedro next to him, really emphasizes that, doesn't it? And they end up being some of my favorite characters. That light, that simpleness. But yeah, it looks like he's fucking Moskos just flying off with a Cedro and Puck as well. Oh god. Not good. Holy crap. This guy's fucking flinging his feathers at us. And there's his, uh, I'm not sure what to call that to be honest with you. Strangling spike staff. <laughs> it's like uh, a few of them are getting few, uh, uh, a few of them are getting through, should I say. Oh god. Man, that really looks like a hawk's kind of talons right there, doesn't it? Picking up his prey. Oh, nasty. Let's not hope that goes in his good eye. I mentioned this last chapter. Better not hope you lose our eye guards. As he just picks us up. And we return. Okay, interesting. 
No. That couldn't possibly. It's the truth. And you have already seen several of what humans would call monsters. No. Miracles. To be sure, there were those among them I was involved with. But all I did was grant them the power they desired. Here on the holy ground, as we see the uh, the goats and the wings. Everything is starting to flow towards that time. I'm doing nothing more than nudging it slightly. You yourself guided that witch to this place, didn't you? Perhaps without knowing it. She did indeed, she did indeed. Again, that was quite a questionable moment, not the fact that she led Casca, I mean, that was very normal. But again, the fact that Luca gave up that man, to be honest with you. Where do I reach from here? <laughs> uh, as you humans would put it, all our omens pointing to that time. It's the guidance of a greater will, or possibly the gears of fate. Soon, it will appear. In exchange for such tiny, no, for something that never even existed in this world. My existence. Yeah, this guy, he will just be nothing, right? After this, he is literally here just to create this new world for the Whoever opens this behelot. Again, you're almost, I wouldn't say admire, but along those lines, you've, you've got a. This guy's done something, if you know what I'm saying. As much as this is kind of evil and wrong and demonic, he's gotten out of that hole. You know, well, has he though? He's done something other than just stay in that hole, being piled upon dead bodies and just dying as nothing. He will be something now. So you've got to appreciate that in a way. I appreciate that in a way anyway. All our omens pointing to that time. It's the, great, it's the guidance of a greater will or possibly the gears of fate. Soon it will appear. Hey, let's go. Skull Knight. Why'd you bring me here? Why'd you make me listen to that? Good question. I don't really see Luca being... He almost looks quite sad there, doesn't he? I don't really see Luca being this... Griffith kind of... person to evolve, right? No, I don't really see her in that position at all, but who knows? Why why would he why would he say all this? It's a good question. But yeah, here's a uh, Skull Knight. I mean I would have liked to hear the answer to that Skull Knight, so fuck you. <laughs> Coming in at a bad time, but another really cool shot of him right here. Almost looks like a fawn bush himself. That's when you get spiked. I guess, like I said, uh, I mentioned this in the last chapter, it's about Skull not looking hungry. as a kind of lead up to what this guy could be, and it ends up being right. Um, quite funny, isn't it? What, what happens if Skull Knight wins? Will he just consume this guy? There's still lots of questions surrounding that, isn't there? Like, why the hell got Skull Knight as consuming slash eating or storing I'm not sure which one these behelots anyway still a bit up in arms oh wow that really is good at running away isn't he we just miss completely I mean there's a skull knight we're talking about here the powerful fast dude he's 
he swung swords against the bloody god hand a few of the god hand and lived and, and escaped from them I mean this is no fucking ordinary Joe is it it's pretty impressive to be honest with you it doesn't matter who just so before I disappear someone hears my story do you know what it's quite fitting that that person would be Luca actually the kind of almost mother of the story so far imagine this guy met Luca before he turned into a demon probably would have been given up the way Luca again like I said earlier about the Casca meeting probably would have been given up considering how she's treated other men <laughs> in this series probably would have just said yeah yeah have him have them guards take them away yeah maybe yeah, maybe I'm chatting rubbish there but like I said she has been the mother of the story so I just absolutely flung my bloody headphones in my face right there but that's like what we saw with that look it's pretty sad isn't it they looked really sad here but I guess that explains why doesn't it just so someone can hear him just so someone listens and knows his story. He still had that much strength. No. A hesitation in my sword. That it's not yet time to kill him. Death. Who are you? <laughs> no. Who are you and all the others? That with... Sorry. That with which those of your world... Would do well not to become involved. <laughs> would do. Would oh, bloody hell! Sorry, guys. So, it's such a weird way of speaking. That with which those of your world would do well not to become too involved. Although, depending on what happens at this holy ground, that truth itself could change. And you might want him to be, and you might want to see this guy on a regular basis. That's quite scary to think about. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, Luca's not really going to understand that issue. <laughs> I can talk all cryptic again. This makes a bit more sense. Well, I can I say it makes a bit more sense. It's always made sense. It's just I can understand it this time. What? It's like the place is collapsing. Really? Where did he just get that from? Where did he just get this little snack from right here? Eating on the job. Is this is this the fuel? I did mention this when it happened. Again, this is this is one of my many possibilities and thoughts. Again, I've had so many. One is probably right <laughs> about this whole fucking skull night eating the hell it's thing. But are they his substance? Are they, are they his fuel? Is this what gives him his power? As he just pops in and a head it, just just easy as that. Just pops one in. Where did you get it from? Is that one of his ones he already had? A lump? As he just springs out. Th thanks once again, I guess. Uh -huh. No. It's too soon for thanks. Indeed, indeed. Oh god. Oh shit. Oh god. Oh wow, look at that on the right. <laughs> hey, I see your panties. Um that's the fucking that's the accumulation of all those uh dead spirits and such, isn't it? That was in the castle. It's actually luckily enough for everyone else it's came outside, but it's now 
with an endless amount of dead bodies, which can't be good. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, interesting couple of chapters today, weren't they? Omen's End. Really, a uh, really cool way to end off this, uh, this one. But again, some more questions. Again, Skull Knight. Um, kind of seems like this would kind of be this kind of substance. These these behelets. Again, maybe you just found one. It's popping in for storage again. And I don't really know. Maybe it's what keeps him alive all this time. Who knows? And again, we know he's definitely not normal. Very interesting stuff there, and some really cool stuff with the uh, little behelet guy as well. Again, quite sad, honestly, isn't it? All his backstory and, and talking to Luca about all this. And like I say, I almost appreciate the fact he's doing something. He could have just easily just kind of faded out, just been nothing. Just been, been pretty much one of those dead bodies that was piled on top of him. No one would have ever, ever knew. And as much as just demonic and bad, I, again, I actually quite appreciate the fact he's done something. He wants to open up a new world for others and such. And... As much as it's wrong, give them a better life and such. But yeah, some nice action, se action sequences again today. Uh, some really awesome moments with a sea drone park. Yeah, some really, uh, really nice shots, as usual, of course, as I always say. Really like this one as well. This one was really cool. This one captured quite a bit of um, Farnese's story up until this point, hasn't it? Just in this one, one panel. Yeah, I'll read some comments in a minute. Yeah, this guy here, I, I like this duo as well. It's an unexpected duo um, of Luca and Skull Knight, isn't it? But again, quite an interesting quite one I actually really like, actually. Quite interesting indeed. Hmm. Yeah, so these people are talking about here. Does he? Does he? This person says, "Does he eat this? Does he eat the behelets for strength?" This person says, "He eats them to get rid of them." Interesting. Yeah, is it strength? Is it substance? Is it longevity? Is it just a storage unit? Who knows? I can't wait to find out, to be honest with you. <laughs> I can't wait. I wonder if we ever do find out, is a question. He's such a mysterious character. It almost seems like he'll always be mysterious, if you know what I'm saying. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, again, some really interesting stuff today. Again, especially with uh, Luca and this Behelet Skull Knight. Some really interesting stuff going on. Talk about Nina as well. Like I said, my two favourites. Say it like say it like it's a good thing, but my two favourites for that kind of candidacy of evolving and being and being cracked open and evolving would uh, definitely begin be Nina or Farni. So I just do wonder which which one of the two, or it might it might be again completely out of my vision, and it might be someone else. Might might be Luca, which would be quite crazy to me. I can't really see it being anyone else, so um, yeah, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, do let me know what you guys think of these chapters so down in the comment section. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you guys do like and subscribe to the channel if you do want to keep up to date with these reactions. I'll be back next time with uh, the chapters. We'll just have a look quickly. See what we can look forward to. I'll be uh, doing those tomorrow uh, with the chapters martyrdom, which is uh, I think means like sacrifice in the name of something almost like a uh almost like a a, a death a death that has a message i will just google it <laughs> oh, to your dom. the death or suffering of a martyr and a martyr is a person who is killed because of their religious or other beliefs a person who displays or exaggerates their discomfort or distress. Um, oh, I, I always kind of thought that was like a, a death with like a message, for example, like someone dying 
for a cause SAS message and that their death being a kind of signal. I think there is I think I think I think I think that because it is read a lot to kind of Christianity, isn't it? And the person who was killed because of their religious beliefs or other beliefs and that usually kind of goes hand in hand a little bit, but um yeah, so we've got martyrdom and collapse, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we've done we've done these two today. So yeah, we've got martyrdom and collapse, and then um after tomorrow's episode I'll be uh it'll obviously be a week and then I'll be doing all three of these in uh one video for kind of triple upload. So hopefully you'll join them. Thank you guys very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.